Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. And this is the game of Active Directory series where we are attacking our Pivot Team Lab where we have access to a SQL Server for now. Our main goal is to learn Pivot Team skills and so far in our series we have access to a SQL Server as a local user or a SQL user, whichever user you are. Our main goal for this video is to see can we escalate our privilege to system? That way we can move from just compromising a machine and moving to the domain. It's way easier to compromise a domain when we have system access on a machine, then we can dump credentials, we can even interact with some of the accounts that are on the system after we move on. So right now where we are in our series is we have access to SQL, we have persisted on this machine, and in our queue chain, we have achieved persistence. Uh, now we need to make sure that we actually escalate our privileges. And for our escalation, uh, privilege escalation, this is the result of a techniques that provide an attacker with higher permissions to a system or network. That's what we want today. Instead of just being a user, we want to be system. One of the first commands that we can run is the one that I already ran here. Who am I? Who am I is something that you run to see what permissions do you have on a system? You have seen this in most of my hack the box and things like that. But when you get the results from who am I like this, what we are looking at is, are we part of the administrators? And also, what are the permissions can we can we get? Our user here is in a lot of groups, as you can see. We are part of all these groups. One thing that you probably see in a lot of CTFs or even in some systems is this set impersonate privilege. This is the one that we're going to be exploiting today. Every time you see this, make sure you try some of these uh, escalations. If you Google it, you see that there is rotten potatoes or potato exploits. That's what we're going to do. One of the things that we are going to be doing is figuring out, do these actually generate an alert? Or well, spoiler alert, it does generate an alert. So as a red teamer or somebody who's doing a pen test, when I want to exploit set impersonate privilege, I probably want to get a system beacon back. That means that I can use execute assembly to execute this in memory. So first, I'm going to do this as bare minimum. I'm not going to try to bypass anything. There is a potato, a uh, sweet potato exploit. So the way that this um, potato works is if you execute this potato, it will actually give you a system beacon after. I highly suggest that you go and read more about the exploit. But for now, I'm going to show you quickly how we can do that. First, we need to download. I downloaded this from um, the Sharp Collection by Flengvik, that's a very trusted source for me. I highly suggest that you also compile it yourself if you can, but for me, that's the one that I downloaded. When I downloaded it, it ended up being in my downloads folder. And in my downloads, you notice that I now have the sweetpotato.exe. I'm going to use execute assembly from Adaptic C2. Execute assembly allows us to run an assembly that's local. So we run a executable that's local, run it in memory, using our existing beacon this is a way that attackers use to try to not upload another binary because if we upload sweet potato.exe to the victim it will definitely get flagged so a clever way is let's execute it in memory here however this is not foolproof as you've seen a little bit here it does still get caught because we're executing something we're doing behaviors that are not normal on a windows machine and most modern av tools will definitely catch you as i'll show you in a little bit so this is a way for us to execute it get our system beacon and also learn that we do indeed get caught and then we can talk about it in a second so first we know that we have certain personal privilege we're going to use sweet potato for this we have execute assembly then the, the path to the sweet potato then we need to give it a path to an executable or dll that we want to execute or it could be a script or it could be anything that's the syntax that we are using in this case, I'm being lazy, I'm going to an executable, but make sure that you also maybe have a script that downloads a second payload later. Here, if I do an ls, you'll notice that I already have um, the adapt.exe payload that bypasses AV, which we spoke about in the last video. This could be a DLL, this could be an LNK, this could be a junction folder or any batch script, but I just want to execute this one here. What are we doing here? We're saying, hey, execute assembly, go to this potato. This is a way, run it in memory. And when you run it, point it to adapt.exe. 
and this should just immediately give us our core back right at the top here. So let's wait for a second. All right, as you can see, we got a new core back. That's pretty much how we do it. And notice that uh, the user this time is system. So this was privilege escalation. From our normal local user, now we are in, on system. We can even console to that and use, say, who am I? This should tell us that we are system. As you can see, we can interact with it. As a system user, we can now do a lot of things like dumping credentials from memory or doing all kinds of things. So in the next video, we're going to try to access all the credentials on this system. See if we can even touch domain user credentials. That way we can move from just having access to a server to actually being on the system. Okay, we did a few things here. Even though we ran this in memory, did this actually still not do anything? Well, let's go to uh, our Elastic and look at the alerts that we generated because we did run a public binary that was not obfuscated. We engaged in behaviors that included privilege escalation and running in a memory structure that we were not actually supposed to be. So here are the alerts that we generated in the last time. So let's look through this. Well, first, it's seeing that we did run the process adapter.exe. Let's start with this one. Malicious behavior detected. Windows console execution of, from unbaked memory. This is something that we did. Windows console identifies creation of Windows console host process where creating threads stack contains frames pointing outside of known executable image. So even though we ran in memory, this is the downside of using execute assembly, whether it's Cobalt Strike or our existing C2, Adaptic C2, it still can generate alerts like this because the behavior is still not as uh, great. What is the alternative to this? Using a buff might have been better. Finding a clever way of doing it. Okay, same one as this one. Let's look at another one. So identifies the creation of an elevated process running a system within spoofed parent process. So again, this is what we did. Even though we did avoided dropping a banner on disk, behavior analysis still catches us. So is principle for something that we should be running as attackers, pen testers? Maybe, but if you do, this is something that you probably need to work on, maybe not doing, figuring out how to bypass that. If anybody knows a better way to do this without triggering these alerts, please let me know. But I wanted to do this for us for our video so that we can at least see what that looks like or what kind of alerts fire. Because I've ran this potato exploit hundreds of times on Hector Box, never seen actually what, like, what, what it does. So this is a good way to do that. Let's look at another one. Okay, this is just malware detection alert. Um, again, the path to my file, I put this in C, Ludus Adaptic C2 e e EXE. We should probably have put this in a better location. Let's say maybe put it in a user space, put it in C, uh, program files, putting an executable in something like C Ludus, which is a custom directory, maybe not a good idea. So a few things for me to learn here and as well as showing you what happens when an attacker is using a C2 and they're using something like execute assembly. So we know it is not foolproof running sweet potato or juicy potato or bad potato, one of those. They do get caught however they still give us what we need so we learned something here now i have a system beacon here it'll be nice to persist a system however this system beacon is what we're going to use to do credential dumping and other things that we'll do in the next videos thank you for watching i hope you learned something looking at the alerts and everything and i hope to see you in the next video as we continue to learn and build up on our skills thank you